Hello again, Power BI people. In this video, we're going to talk about calculation groups. Uh, this feature came out for Power BI, I think, last summer in July. And at the time, uh, I didn't fully appreciate it. I was like, ah, I'm good. I'm doing all this great stuff with Power BI. I'm not sure I, I need those. Um, and so I was kind of late to the party. And I've been using them a lot lately, and I, th I thought I would make this uh, video uh, to explain some of the benefits of using calculation groups and ask you why why you're not using them either. If you build routinely in Power BI, um, calculation groups are great. They can help you build faster, uh, and they can give you some functionality that's, that's hard to get um, without jumping through some extra hoops um, in native Power BI. And some of the... Uh, Benefits are listed here. I'm going to try to demonstrate these today. You can end up with way fewer measures and simplify your model. Um, you know, you can get away from using disconnected tables to have a measure selection via a slicer. Um, the formatting can be easier. Um, instead of using a table visual, you can use a matrix visual and, and therefore do some, some faster formatting. Um, it lets you do some things. I probably won't demonstrate this today, but, but you can have what are called asymmetric tables where you just really specify these are the things I want, and some of them could be totals, and some of them could be individual things, um, and really build the visual that you need. Uh, we'll talk about dynamic format strings. Um, and uh, one key thing about these is you actually can't make calculation groups and calculation items uh, that go in those groups. Uh, in the native Power BI desktop interface, you need tabular editor. Um, which is a free download if you get uh, version 2. Version 3 uh, costs money, which has some great features, but I'll be using uh, Tabular Editor 2 uh, in this demo today. Um, hopefully you're learning from these videos, and if so, and you want to stay up to date with the latest ones and hear when they come out, please subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel uh, and follow me on Twitter, please. All right, so let's talk about uh, calculation groups. So this page is going to demonstrate a, a few of the benefits. And I have a real simple uh, data model here. Um, just have this real simple data table. Uh, there's two, two groups, one and two, four rows for each, A, B, C, D, and then values one, one through eight uh, going down there. So just a real uh, simple model. A lot of times you'll see um, examples using time intelligence functions, which is a great application of calculation groups. Uh, this is this is even uh, simpler, I hope. Um, so if we were going to do this without calculation groups, and say um, for whatever reason, you know, I, the measures I needed were max, min, and sum of of that uh, column there with the values, those one through eight. Um, but I I need a certain groupings of of things. So I needed A and B together, I need the C and D rows together, and then I need just A by itself and B by itself. So you can certainly write uh, measures for each of those things, um, where, for example, if I had the max of AB, um, I would calculate, I have these base measures here as well. So I've got, you know, max number, which is just taking the max of the number column, the min of the number column, and the sum of the number column. And then I'm using those in, in these here. So if I wanted to get um, just the max of A and B, uh, the rows A and B, I would calculate my max um, measure. And then I would say that the letter column values have to be in this hard-coded table of A or B. And then, you know, all these look the same. So C and D is the same. You know, the min is the same kind of function. Same thing with the sum. Um, and then if these only ones where I, I just hard code that the letter equals A or letter equals B. So I could generate a table where I have, you know, all three of these measures for all four of these groupings of letters that I, that I need. Um, but you see it took me 12 measures uh, to do that. Um, and now I want to show you how you would get the same kind of visual but using calculation uh, groups. And that's in this uh matrix below. And so so let's hop over to um, Tabular Editor. So once you've installed Tabular Editor and restart Power BI Desktop, you should see on the External Tools tab uh, the Tabular Editor icon. So I'm going to open that, and it'll open Tabular Editor and already have it connected to this model. So let's maximize that. And then how you um, create calculation groups. I've actually created three here. Um, is you would just click on table here, right click and say create new calculation group. 
you would give it a name, and then you would create calculation items underneath those things. And you can create multiple. Um, and so, but we don't, we're not going to need this, so I'm going to delete that one, and I'll show you the existing ones that I created. So the first one I made is this one called Letter Group, and it's got four calculation items under it. And um, you, you highlight it here, and then you go over here, and this pattern may look similar to the saw that we did, but what is key about these calculation items is I can pass in a measure. So whether it's my max, my min, or my sum measure, I can pass it in here. And so I, I call these, I don't think they're officially called this, but I call these uh, context items because I'm saying, hey, I want to pass in a measure and then um, I want you to evaluate that measure in a certain context that I'm going to specify. And so now I've created this one um, calculation and this expression where whatever I pass in, um, it'll, it'll evaluate it just with the values A and B. And I have the same for C and D and A only and B only, right? And so, you know, this is why um, if I jump over back to Power BI, I can uh, put my, my group column here on the rows, and then I can put that uh, name column, which is actually the, the uh, name of the column that holds the calculation items in it. So basically I'm saying put my calculation items across on columns and then what it does, I can pass in my three base measures that I showed you before and then it evaluates all three of those measures but inside this calculation item AB, it evaluates each one in the context of just the AB rows, same thing for CD, A and B only. So here I was able to basically instead of 12 measures, I was able to do it with one calculation group um, that has uh, four calculation items in it, um, and then leveraging those same three base measures that those other 12 measures were also leveraging. So a huge reduction. So basically, I wouldn't need this whole list of measures. So those 12 measures, I wouldn't need them. Um, so, and again, the more you do, the more, the more savings you get. All right. Um, the other thing that's nice about calculation groups is because that's a, a table and a with a column in it I can use it in other ways as well for example as a as a slicer so here I have this card visual and I've just just dropped my um, some measure into it but I also put on the um, the name column uh, from this calculation group on the on the visual and I could I could filter it like this here or I could use a separate slicer on the page and do that as well. So, so again, I'm not, I don't need to display all of the items at any given time. I can, I can choose which ones I want to show um, in a visual. Um, okay. And the other thing that's nice now, just from a formatting standpoint, if you've done um, a lot of table visuals, you probably know that formatting these. Um, can be a real pain and in that you have to do each each measure all by itself and do the alignment and fonts and all that kind of stuff separately and it can be real painful if with this approach you can have it as a matrix uh, visual and then basically at the at the measure level so you're sort of getting a, a four for one benefit here um, you can specify and, and do your formatting so it can be uh, faster um, and maybe better formatting um, using a matrix visual like this in instead of a table. So a small benefit, um, but, but still a benefit. All right, so those are what I call context items. Um, there's another kind of calculation item you can create, which again, not the official term, but I call them override items. And in those cases, if I go back to tabular editor and I look at this other group here, I just called it overrides just for this demonstration. Um, you'll notice I don't have that selected measure in the expression. So in this case, I'm just saying no matter what's in there, I want you to calculate the max. And for this one, no matter what's, what measure I pass you, I want you to calculate the min and same thing for the sum, right? And so it's just overriding uh, whatever happens there, okay? So if I go back over here, 
and I look at this visual, for example, um, I've put this, this measure here called any. And if we go up here and look at the formula for it, any is just set to one. It's just a constant. Uh, this measure just always returns one. Uh, but it doesn't matter because I'm doing an override. So I put any in there and then I'm all automatically overriding that and calculating the max, the min, or the sum for these two different groups. And again, I can, I can do this as well. So again, instead of having a disconnected table, right, uh, and then making a slicer from that with a switch expression to decide which measure is returned, I can get that same functionality um, much more easily with a calculation group. And then my consumers could say, hey, I want the max, I want the min, I want the sum, uh, and they get that benefit. OK, um, so that's uh, override items. Another nice benefit of um, calculation groups is you can have dynamic formatting as well. So we go back to tabular editor. And I, I duplicated um, this group. So this is all identical, but I added some formatting to this one uh, for, for demonstration. And so in this case, I can click on the AB one, and this is that same expression that was there before, pass that in. But for each of these, you also have this option of the format string expression. And so you can, you can hard code it in, uh, or you can provide an expression uh, to do that. And so I did AB, I wanna show two decimal places. Um, this one, I just wanna show one decimal place for CD. And then uh, A, I put, a only, I put this expression here and I said, um, if it's the sum measure, if I pass you the sum measure, uh, then show two, otherwise show um, no, no decimal places, just show integers there. And I think I put the same thing here for this one, All right? So I can dynamically, um, I can either hard code it in based on the value or it can have an expression there and return a format string depending on what measure is used um, in the report. And so if you go back and look at this one, you can see that the AB one is showing two decimal places. The CD is doing zero. The A and B are showing integers unless the sum uh, measure is passed to in which case showing two. So again, you get some, some great functionality here. Um, so this was just a quick video uh, to show you some of the benefits of using calculation groups. Um, in my next video, I'm actually going to show how you can apply conditional formatting uh, when you're using um, calculation groups. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, thank you.